heavens and earth they adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. The heavens and earth they adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Come on, put your hands together. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. The heavens and earth, they adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Jesus is the God we serve. Jesus is the God we serve. Angels bow before him. The heavens and earth, they adore him. Jesus is the God we serve. One more time. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. The heavens and earth, they adore him. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Can we say hallelujah? Can we say hallelujah? What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. The heavens and earth, they adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. The heavens and earth, they adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I thank God this morning for allowing me to be in the number just one more time. At this time, this service is coming to you from Bethany Apostolic Church, where the Honorable Bishop G.W. Frazier Sr. is the pastor. If you would like to contact us, you can do so at our website, which is BethanyApostolicEversville.org, or our Gmail account, which is BethanyApostolic212 at gmail.com. If this service has been a blessing to you, drop something in the comment box. Let us know that you are worshiping God with us this morning. Can we say hallelujah? Can we say hallelujah? Hallelujah. I feel pretty good this morning. I got a free portion of my health and strength. I'm able to walk through them doors. I'm clothed in my right mind. What a mighty God I serve. Hallelujah. At this time, the order of service calls for prayer. And we're going to ask our own evangelist, Alexander, to come and render our prayer this morning. Take us before the throne of grace. I'm asking the saints, let us remember one another this morning. Let's pray for our churches all over this world, internationally and nationally. Pray for our children, you know, as a, and, and one more thing, and pray for Sister Bivana Wallace's mother, who would be here this morning, but she's at the hospital with her mother, and she requests the prayer of the saints. How many know that the prayers of the righteous availeth much? Hallelujah. I'm asking a special prayer for educators all over this world, for those teachers who are concerned about our children. I lost a student of ninth grade, 10th grade, I believe, of overdose this week. So you pray much for those teachers that are concerned about children. 
What a mighty God we serve. He can do all things but fail, and I believe that. But as we go before the throne of grace, let us remember our assistant pastor, Edel Floyd, who has been doing a tremendous job in absence of our pastor. And let us remember our pastor this morning. Can we say hallelujah? Can we say hallelujah? Can we say hallelujah? Pass me not, O oh, gentle Savior. Oh, hear my heart, oh, cry. Well, why all on earth thou art called only Father God, we come before you.
First of all, to say we thank you. We appreciate you. Oh, God, we exalt you. Lord, we lift you up. Lord, we magnify your name. Oh, God, we love you. We praise you. We give you honor. We give you glory. Without you, we are nothing. Without you, we can do nothing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you. Hallelujah for giving us this day, oh God. We thank you for allowing us to rise one more time. We thank you for your protection, for your blood that you spilled for us on Calvary. We thank you. We praise you. We thank you for your healing power. We thank you for being a mind regulator. We thank you for being a present help, oh God. Lord, we magnify your name right now. Because without you, we are nothing. We magnify you for what you do. We praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, realizing there is none like you, oh God. Uh, why can't we go, oh God, and find help and mercy and deliverance, God? Uh, uh, you're very present help. Oh, we bless you. You are worthy to be praised. In the midst of the storm, in the midst of trouble, in the midst, hallelujah, of sorrow, hallelujah. We ask, oh God, this morning, if you remember the oppressed, the depressed, the alcoholic, Oh, God, the suicide this morning, the broken homes, oh, God, the backsliders this morning, oh, God. Remember the sick and the shut-in, oh, God. Those, oh, God, that are contemplating suicide this morning, oh, God, remember our children in a special way, uh, uh. Oh, God, it in their minds, they think violence is the answer. Uh, uh, help them to understand, oh, God, that you are the help that they need. Oh, God, help them to come to you, oh, God, in the time of sorrow, in the time of hurt, uh, uh, in the time of pain, oh, God, uh, uh, when they can't see a way out. Uh, help them to understand that you are the way out. Uh, 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 you are very present help, oh God. Remember our children. Remember those we haven't seen in the household, household of prayer. Move by your power, by your spirit. Remember those that are on their beds of affliction, oh God. Oh God, those, oh God, that are bereaved this morning. Lift up the bow down head, Lord. Regulate the mind, oh God. Move by your power, oh God. Uh, break down every yoke that is not yours, oh God. Uh, 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 uh. Oh God, we give you honor and glory this morning. Uh, uh, uh. We magnify you this morning, oh God. Uh, uh, uh. We lift you up this morning, for we realize there is none like you. Move by your power, oh God. Remember every soul, oh God. Those that may be on their way here today, oh God. In the name of Jesus, those that are contemplating, oh God, backsliding, oh God. Give them a mind, oh God, to be saved, oh God. That in you we live, we move, and we have our being. There's nothing like you, oh God. I can't find it anywhere, oh God, but in the house of God. Oh God, we give you praise and we give you honor. Even in the midst of trouble, in the midst of the storm, oh God. In the midst of sickness, oh God, uh, uh, lift up the bow down head this morning. Uh, 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 regulate the mind this morning. Move, oh God, move, oh God, move, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Uh, no other name we can call on for help. Uh, no other name we can call on for strength. Uh, no other name we can call on for peace and for joy. Uh, uh, uh. It's all in the name of Jesus. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, God, remember our pastor, oh, God. Uh, uh. 
continue to strengthen his body. Uh, remember our co-pastor, oh God, uh, the deacon board, oh God, uh, trustees, oh God, the laity, oh God. We're all standing in the need of help this morning. Amen. Can't make it, oh God, without you. We ask if you would keep us, God, in the hollow of your hand, under the shadow of your wings, oh God. And we'd be so careful to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. And every heart say amen. amen. And again we say amen. amen. Can we say hallelujah? Can we say hallelujah? There's a song that Sister Joyce Johnson used to sing when she was around here. When you call on Jesus, he'll answer prayer. At this time, we're going to have the order of service calls for our scripture. And we're going to have Deacon Juan Brooks come and render our scripture for today. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Today's scripture will be coming from Psalms 27. Psalms 27. Sister Dottie, I told you the wrong one. It's Psalms 27. I'm sorry. And it reads, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumble and fall. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart should not fear. Through the war, through war should rise against me, and this will I be confident. One thing, one thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. I've read Psalms 27, verses 1 through 5. May the Lord have a blessing and a hearing to his word. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. At this time, we're going to have our first lady come and render some songs from the hymnal book. Let's get behind her this morning as she comes. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand praise this morning. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Isn't this a beautiful day? Isn't this a beautiful day? Isn't this a beautiful day? We ought to just stand on your feet if you can and just give him a praise this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This, for this first day, first, uh, uh, for the first day of spring on Sunday, I think I got that kind of backwards, but it's just a beautiful day. And I don't know about you, but I'm happy down in my soul. I thank God for this day. Amen. At last and it my Savior bleed and did my suffering die. Would he devote that
It was at the cross. Hallelujah. At this time, I'm going to allow for Sister Johnson to come and render us a welcome to our in-house as well as our virtual views. Can we say amen? amen? Let's receive Sister Johnson as she comes, Sister Susan Johnson. Amen? Amen. amen. Good morning. Uh, we would like to welcome everyone into the house of our sanctuary this morning. Thank you, Lord, for waking us all up this morning. Uh, we welcome you. We would like for you to come and accept this aggressive word. We hope your eyes, your ears, your heart, and your soul is open this morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Can we say hallelujah? Can we say hallelujah? Can we say hallelujah? If you ain't woke, I'm going to wake you up this morning. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. What a mighty God I serve. Amen. Amen. The order of service also calls for announcements this morning. We would like to recognize our March birthdays. Sister Cindy Floyd celebrated a birthday this past week. <laughs> Amen. Brother Chris Clark celebrated a birthday last week. And we have an upcoming birthday, which is our own Deacon Juan Brooks, the 31st of March. Can we say amen? Amen, amen. Again, if you would like anything such as your anniversary, birthday, spiritual birthday, natural birthday, please get with our PR person, which is Sister Marlo Brooks. She would like those turned in in a timely fashion. Amen? Amen. It's not to overlook you. We would love to include you in that book for your anniversaries or your birthdays. Amen. Also remember that Elder Floyd's reading responses are located out on our media. Can we say hallelujah? Take your time again to read those. Amen? 
Also, our Sunday morning service is at 11 a.m., online and in person. Our Tuesday night Bible class are from 6 to 8 p.m., online and in person. We also have a Tuesday night, fourth Tuesday night Family Matters class, amen. We also have a Thursday, corp, Thursday corporate prayer from 6 to 7. Come and join us in prayer. We, you, prayer doesn't hurt anything. Prayer is good. Amen. It's good for me. Amen. Also, we have, we have a food pantry that operates every third Monday of the month from 6 to 8 p.m. If you need those services, please adhere to those services. You can do so by our email, which is bethanyapostolic212 at gmail.com, or our website, which is bethanyapostolicevisville.org. We're looking to hear from you. Amen? Amen. Also, I would like to let's get a round of applause to our culinary department for that excellent dinner on Sunday. <laughs> that was in conjunction with our Soul Food Community Project. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Culinary Arts Department. Amen. Amen. There's no announcements. I see one visitor, but she's here all the time. I'm glad to see you this morning. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 And Sister Angela, we're glad to see you here this morning as well. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's move on. We're going to have Sister Cindy Floyd and Sister Frazier come, and we're going to render our uh, praise service. Get behind us this morning. God is good to us. God is good. How many know he's good? Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you. Oh, Lord, I just want to thank you. Yeah. Lord, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you, Lord, for being so good to me. To me, oh, Lord, I, I just, just want to thank you. I want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. I want to thank you, oh Lord. Lord I just want to thank you. Oh Lord, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you, Lord, for being. So good, so good to me. Yeah. You were my bread when I was hungry. You were my water when I was thirsty. You were my shelter in the time of storm. And no, you never, never left me alone. I want to thank you. So good to me, so good, so good to me. You've been so good, 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 so good, so Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Well, I thank, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you in my heart. Oh, oh yes, oh, I thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, yes, I thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, yes, I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, oh, yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you in my heart. Oh, yes, I thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, yes, I thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Jesus. Thank you. Oh, I need yes, to I thank you, Jesus. Thank you in my heart. Oh, I thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, yes, I thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, yes, I thank you, Jesus. Thank you in my heart. I know that you can't make me down. No, no, no. You can't make me down. No, no, no. Oh, you can't make me down. 
take me down here in my heart. Oh, but you can't make me down here. I know too much about him. You can't make me down here in my heart. Oh, yes, I feel the fire burning. Oh, drift away, 
So those song is so true. If you're not anchored in Jesus, every wind that blow, you're going to blow right with it. So I'm going to make sure my soul is anchored in Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There is a storm out on life ocean. Hallelujah. If you ain't experienced one right now, you will live long enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. We're going to move on to another portion of our service, which is seed time. And we will have our own assistant pastor come and render this part of our service. Can we receive Assistant Pastor Elder Floyd with a hearty amen? Amen. Can we say amen again? Amen. amen. Once again, we are going to another, what well, we are going to an extension, amen, of our service, and that is seed time, amen. We have, we have been in our worship service, and this is only an extension of our worship service. So we invite everyone that's in the house and all those that may be on the internet watching us or even uh, 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 listening on the internet, we invite you also to be a part of this service. We ask everyone to bring your tithes and offering. Those that's in house, you can bring them and put them in the uh, cans or the tray we have in the back. And those that may be watching or listening on the internet, amen, uh, the PR person will come after I sit down she will tell you also how you can participate. Let us all stand, if you will. <clears throat> Let us continue to pray for our pastor. Amen. Let's pray uh, that God will give him a speedy recovery and be bringing him back soon. Amen. Amen. Once again, Lord God, we thank you. We thank you once again, Lord God, just for your loving grace and tender kindness. We thank you, Lord God, just for your mercy. We ask right now, Lord God, to continue not only to watch over our pastor, but watch over each and every one under the sound of our voice today. Those that may be watching or listening on the Internet, continue, Lord God, to pour our blessings upon them also. Bless this part of the service, Lord God, which we call seed time. Bless us, Lord God, in our giving. Also, Lord God, bless us. In any way, Lord God, that you see possible, continue, Lord God, to keep each and every one in the palm of your hand. This offering, Lord God, we offer it up to you today, and we will give you the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Again, for our virtual viewers, you can give at Money Pound BAC 3595. Again, the cash app is Money Pound BAC. 3595. You can also give at Givelify or our website, which is BethanyApostolicEvansville.org. Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to call for Sister Cindy Floyd to come and render us a selection. Let's receive Sister Floyd with a hearty amen. Our birthday candidate. <laughs> amen. My God is awesome. He can move mountains, keep me in the valley, and have me from the rain. My God is awesome. He can. Mountains keep me in the valley and hide me from the rain. My God is awesome, heals me when I'm broken, strength 
When I've been weaker, forever he will reign. My God is awesome. He can move mountains and keep me in the valley and hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. 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 He can move mountains and keep me in the valley. And hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. He can move mountains and keep me in the valley and, and hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is awesome. Oh, my God is awesome. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, oh. My God is awesome. Oh, yes, he is awesome. Oh, yes, he is awesome. Oh, he's awesome. My God is awesome. He can move mountains and keep me in the valley and hide me from the rain. How many know our God is awesome? How many know my God is awesome? I'm going to make it personal. My God is awesome. Hallelujah. He moves mountains and keep us in the valley. My God is awesome. Thank you, Sister Floyd. At this time, we're going to move on to another portion of our service, and we're going to have our own Sister Alexander come and introduce our speaker, which is our assistant pastor. But before we do that, we ask that you limit your walking and talking. Silence your cell phones. Amen? Amen? Amen. At this time, Sister Alexander, Vandis Alexander. Can we say praise the Lord? 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 Can we say praise the Lord?
I could be singing a sad song, but the joy of the Lord, Amen. he gives us strength. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 My, 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 my. Hallelujah. That we look around and say, oh, no. It's all about Jesus. It's all about God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And if we lift him up, 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 in the lean times, in the long times, in the sad times, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, he's good, he's good, he's good, he is good. I refuse, hallelujah, to walk around with my head down. When God, I know he's the pastor. Depression will come, Amen. and you lose your joy. Amen. You don't feel like praising. You don't feel like thanking possibly, because I've been there. Amen. But I refuse. I refuse. Yeah. I refuse. Yeah. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. But we owe him a praise. Amen. We owe him a praise. Amen. If it's nothing else, the Lord, I thank you. Yeah. Lord, I appreciate you. It's all to the glory of God. Amen. Can we say praise the Lord? Praise Can Lord. we say praise the Lord? Praise Can we say praise the Lord? Praise Sometimes the Lord. I'm long-winded. Can we say praise, praise the Lord? Jesus. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. What a mighty, mighty God. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands, oh you gates, and be ye lifted up. And what the King of Glory is gonna do? He's gonna come in. Hallelujah! He'll come into your situation. He'll move on your situation. Hallelujah! We're in the right place. We're in the right place because we need a Savior. How we need it. And I'm not going to say much more. I'm going to introduce our speaker who is well qualified, who has been blessing our soul, Amen. who is dependable. Amen. Amen. Who Bishop can rely on, Amen. who comes with the word of God. Amen. Let's receive our assistant pastor, right. Elder Earl Floyd, Amen. with a hearty praise the Lord. 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 We say amen once again. Amen. amen. You may be seated. Isn't God good? Yes, yes. Amen. He put food on our table and amen. clothes on our bags. Amen. And he woke us up this morning. Amen. amen. Let us continue to pray for our bishop. Amen. amen. In this time of absence, let's pray that God will give him a speedy recovery. From what I understand, he's doing a lot better. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I know the last time I talked with him, he seemed like his old self. 
You know, uh, he didn't seem weak or, or tired or anything. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray for each other also. Amen. Because we know that God is good. And, and let us pray that God will continue to be in our lives. I'm not going to be before you very long, but our message will be taken from the book of Mark. From the book of Mark, <clears throat> chapter 4, and we will start at verse 35. To those on the internet that may be listening or watching us on the internet, we're coming to you from Bethany Apostolic Church in the city of Evansville, Indiana. Amen. Our address, if you want to get in contact with us, is at 212 Mulberry Street. And we also encourage, we also not only encourage you to watch us on Sunday morning at 11 a.m., we also encourage you to tune in, amen, on Tuesday evening at 6 p.m., amen. And I guarantee it will be a blessing to you either Sunday morning or Tuesday uh, evening. So just tune in and help to support this ministry just by viewing it and, and listening to this. Mark chapter 4, and we'll be reading verse 35. The title I placed on this is that is uh, the captain is on board. The captain is on board. And sometimes when we are, are, are doing church work and we fall upon hard times or hardship or whatever, sometimes it seems as if Jesus is nowhere around. You don't always see the captain. Matter of fact, several years ago when, we, when my wife and I went on a cruise, we were on a cruise for about four days. And we only saw the captain one time. But the captain was always on the ship. And this is the way it is today. The captain we're talking about today is Jesus Christ. And today when we look at Mark chapter 4, beginning at verse 35, so often when we do not see the captain or see Jesus, and we're going through hard times, we're going through struggles, so often it seems as if Jesus is nowhere around. So often it may appear as if he doesn't care. But we know as saints of God that that is not the case. So today, turn with me to the book of Mark, chapter 4, and we'll begin reading at verse 35. Let's read this together. And the same day, when the evening was come, he said unto them, let us. Notice now. He said, let us. Yes. Not you or them. He said, let us. Indicating that he was going to be with them when they went over to the other side. Let us pass over unto the other side. Are you one of us today? When Jesus said, let us, is he talking about you this morning? And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship so that it was full. Verse 38. And he was in the hinder part of the ship. The hinder part of the ship is the tail of the ship. It's there where the rudder is. It's in the tail of the ship and may be Somewhere around the water line. He was asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Notice now, the disciples were in the ship. 
during this storm. Jesus was also in the ship during this storm. The disciples were on board. They were on deck. But Jesus was below the deck in the tail part of the ship, either by the water line of the ship or maybe below the water level of the ocean. Right? said so he was asleep. And he arose and rebuked the wind, said unto the sea, Peace, be still. They went and woke Jesus up. If Jesus was in the hinder part of the ship, somewhere between the hull and the rudder, he had to be in the water himself. Because the writer says that now the ship was now full. So Jesus had to be in the water. Hope everyone see this. He had to be in the water, but he was asleep. And the disciples were afraid that Jesus did not know what was going on. Verse 40, and he said unto them, why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Once again, Lord God, we thank you today. We thank you, Lord God, for the word that's in that's about ready to go forward today. Once again, Lord God, we ask as always the anointing. Place your anointing, Lord God, not only upon the word today, but upon the vessel that's being used. Let something be said, Lord God, that will uplift and edify, that will encourage, Lord God, the downcast heart and the downcast head this day. Continue to watch over each and every one, Lord God, under the sound of our voice. Continue to give Bishop, Lord God, strength and health. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The captain is on board. The captain is on board. At times it may seem that Jesus being the captain of our soul, at times it may seem that he is nowhere around when we are going through something. When the tests and trials begin to overwhelm us, even after we cry out to him, so often we do not hear the voice of God. When the tests and trials seem to come our way more and more frequent, we tend to look around and say, okay, where, where is Jesus? He promised that he would never leave us or forsake us, but where is he? Where is he in my time of need? Where is he in my time where I need to call upon him? This is the way the disciples were. They were in the midst of a storm, and they didn't know what to do. Not the idea that Jesus was not there with them, but he was not in their eyesight. And, and the writer says that they became afraid. When we look at our text today, the writer says this, that they were up all day with the multitude. Jesus was up even from the early sunrise to the going down of the sun. He was up teaching and ministering to this multitude of people. And that had to be taxing, very taxing on him. And then when he finished his preaching and teaching, the writer says that Jesus called his disciples together and he told them, he said, now, let us pass over unto the other side. After all, after all that they were doing that day, 
as busy as they were, the sun has gone down, and now it was almost dark. Isn't it strange how our tests and trials seem to, to be so huge at night? You may have a toothache, but seem like that tooth hurts the worst at night. When we lay down in our beds, whatever pain you may be experiencing, seem like it hurts worse at night. Let us pass over to the other side, is what Jesus told his disciples. He being with them. There was no storm, but the Sea of Galilee was known for their storm. He also said that there were small ships that was with them. In other words, the disciples were not crossing the Sea of Galilee by themselves. There were other ships that chose to go with Jesus. They heard the preaching, they heard the teaching, and they heard the ministering of Jesus Christ. And they decided to get on the right side, small or little ships. And they wanted to follow Jesus. In other words, when the Sea of Galilee began to act up, the disciples were not the only ones on the Sea of Galilee. There were other ships, mind you, going through the same thing. And this is what the writer said. He said, let us, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent the multitude, in other words, Jesus did not leave them empty. He stayed there and he gave them exactly what they needed until they were ready to leave. He gave them the word. He ministered to them in such a way where he had to send, he had to send them off. Isn't that just like church? Has the church been so good? Has the Bible study been so good that you didn't want to leave? Has the preaching been so good at times that you didn't want to leave the church? Even though they, 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 they sent you out of the church, you decide to stay in the parking lot and continue what you were doing inside the church. Oh, yeah. I, I think some of us can relate to that. But here it says that, that they sent the multitude away. They gave this multitude everything that they needed. They gave them enough that they could bring back with them when they came back to church. Isn't that just like God? Give you more than what you need so that you have enough for Monday and come back Tuesday. Give you enough on Tuesday where you can come back Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And you come back here Sunday and you will still where your cup will be running over. This is what Jesus and the disciples did. They sent the multitude away. And then after that, even though we're looking at God in the flesh, his flesh was still tired. The writer said he went to the hinder part of the ship. He went to the hinder part of the ship. He went there to lay down. He went there to lay down. And then verse 27 or 37 says, And there arose a great storm of wind. A great storm of wind. Isn't it strange how when you think that everything is okay, that's when the storms tend to come? They all were on the ship. And now the darkness is beginning to set in. The sun has gone down. 
Not only the literal sun has gone down in the sky, but the Son of God, he's laying down also. And Satan sees this opportunity to do his dirt. Doesn't that sound just like the devil? Trying to catch you unprepared. Trying to get you where you are not aware. That's how the devil works. He tries to get you when your defenses are not up. The writer says, put on the whole armor of God. So that we can defend, so that we can protect ourselves. But when you take that armor off, that is when the devil will try to set in. That is when the devil tries to set in. This is how he did the disciples. Okay, disciples, Jesus is now at the bottom of the ship. He's at the hinder part of the ship. He's nowhere around. And now Satan's beginning to reason within himself. Now is a good time to attack these unprotected sheep. That's how he works. That's how he works. Brothers, you may go out of town to a ball game or to a church service, and the wife and kids are not with you. Satan will attack you in your mind, and whatever you may be lacking, he will bring that to you. Whether it be drugs, whether it be alcohol, it might be pornography. But he will bring that to you thinking that no one will find out about this. This is how he did the disciples. He brought this package to the disciples. Brought this to the disciples just to test their faith. Just to show Jesus that he was still the devil and that his power was more powerful than the Son of God. This thing's not about you. It's not about you. Whenever Satan attacks you and uses you in such a way where you will feel condemned, after you fall for the tricks of the adversary, he will go back to God and accuse you, accuse us in front of God. I told you, God, that Elder Floyd wasn't nothing. I told you, God, that I could get that thing to drink or shoot up again with drugs. I told you, God, that this person still had an evil spirit in them. That's how Satan works. That's how he works. And then, as if that's not enough, he said, I will do it again. And there's nothing that he can do. He goes to God bragging and turn down the things that God has given us. I told you I could make that same gossip and, and backbite. I told you, God. But here we find, here we find the disciples on board. <clears throat> and the writer says, and there arose a great storm. It was a storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was full, so that now it was full. Satan used two tactics. He used two tactics to get to the disciples. He used the wind, not only the blowing of the wind, but mostly he used the sound. He used the sound of the wind. Think about it. He used the sound of the wind. It's the sound of the wind that will cause terror in our hearts. We can deal with the blowing. We can deal with the swaying of the trees and the falling of the leaves during the storm, but it's the sound that scares so many of us. 
The sound of a tornado sounded like a freight train coming through. The sound of bombardment sounded like bombs exploding. It's the sound, the sound, it's the sound that scares us. And that's what it was with the disciples. It was the sound that scared the disciples. And then if that's not enough, he said, now, it's the waves. It's the waves. The waves beat into the ship. It was a wave that was tossing, that was causing the ship to bounce. So it was the sound and the beating of the ship caused by the waves. And this is what scared the disciples. The waves, the waves were higher than what the ship was. And it caused water to flow into the ship. And the wind was blowing. But it was the noise of the wind that was so frightening. Has anyone been like the disciples? The noise, the noise of your tests and trials. You can't sleep at night because of the noise. You hear that voice in your ear talking to you, causing you to think and making the situation much, much worse. It's the noise. It's the noise that you hear in your soul, the noise that you hear in your heart that causes so much stress and turmoil. And then added on to that, it's the beating of the waves causing your ship to fill up with water. You don't know what to do or which way to turn or go because you're being beaten. You're being tossed to and fro by the adversary. This is what was happening to the ship that they were in. And mind you, the writer says there were other ships, little ships with them, and they were going through the same thing that Jesus and the disciples were going through. Now the ship was full, and he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep. And the disciples did this. They were mindful enough to cry out to Jesus. They were mindful enough to cry out to Jesus. This is an example of how we should be. Whenever we are going through a test and trial, we need to learn how to cry out to Jesus. When we are going through a great test and trial, we need to learn how to pray. And the best way to learn how to pray is to come out on Tuesday nights. The best way to cry out to Jesus is to say, Lord God, I need your help. Um, it seems like I'm in this thing by myself. I cannot do it alone. I've talked to you, but seemingly you are so far away from me. When we look at the scripture and look at some of the apostles and disciples in the scripture, we find out that they cried and cried unto God. And seemingly God was nowhere around. I'm reminded that when the children of Israel were going through the Red Sea, they were in a fix. Pharaoh has chased them similar to a dead-end road. They couldn't go to the left, and they couldn't go to the right. The mountains was on the left, the mountains on the right, and they had the great Red Sea in front of them. And they began to become afraid. And we all know how it is to be scared. I've been scared a lot of times in my life, and I'm sure that you have been also. They came to the Red Sea, and they began to cry out to God. They began to cry out to Moses. Moses, what are we going to do? 
We would have been better off if we stayed in Egypt. And Moses told them this. This was the principle that Moses talked to the children of Israel. He said, stand still. He said, stand still. Sometimes saying, we have to stand still. And what they were talking about is to stand still and be quiet. He told them the same thing that Jesus told the storm and the wind. Moses told them in so many words, peace, be still. In other words, he told the children of Israel just to stand still and watch the salvation of God. What else can we do when we are afraid? What else can we do when we have tried everything and everything has failed? One writer said we should try Jesus. Do you know, do you believe this morning that Jesus is all right? Do you believe that he can bring you through your tests and trials? Do you believe this morning that he will make everything in such a way where you will have a testimony? Do you believe that he can turn your tests and trials into a testimony that you can encourage someone else by? This is what Jesus did on the ship. The writer says, and there arose and he rebuked the wind and said unto the disciples and to the sea, and he said unto the wind, he said, peace, be still. And from the word itself, from the word that Jesus spoke, the writer said, and the wind ceased and there was great calm among the waves. Isn't that just like God? Isn't that just like God? You cannot sleep at night, and he may put his hand on your shoulder. He may put his hand upon your head and say, peace, and tell you to be still. Isn't that just like God? God is telling you that everything is going to be all right. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm glad that I have a God that can give me peace in the middle of a storm. When I lay down at night, I can lay down with the assurance that everything is going to be all right. He told them, don't be afraid and don't be scared because I'm the one that can control this thing. I'm in control of this situation. This is what Jesus is telling them. This is what he told them also. He said, don't worry, don't be afraid. He said, I have everything under control. He talked to the wind. He talked to the storm. What more can he do to you and me? The tests and trials that we have in our lives, he can talk to that storm. He can talk to the test and tell us that everything will be all right. I lay there. I wanted to do right, but wrong was nowhere. It was in me. The more I wanted to do right, I did wrong. I wanted to act right. I wanted to talk right, but I had no control. Jesus said uh, it would be uh, all right. Uh, he's telling you uh, right now, uh, peace uh, be still. Uh, don't worry uh, about the drug habit. Uh, I can take care of that. Uh, don't worry about the pornography uh, that you may be thinking about. Uh, he said, I can take uh, care of that. Uh, I will bring peace uh, into uh, your life. Uh, I can bring love uh, into uh, your life. Uh, just uh, call uh, upon me. Uh, this is what uh, God wants you to do. Uh, just as uh, the disciples uh, cried out uh, to Jesus, Lord, uh, care is not uh, that we die. Uh, Lord God, I need you uh, right now. Uh, he wants us uh, to lay down uh, and get down uh, upon our knees uh, and cry out uh, to him. Uh, Lord God, uh, I need uh, your help. Uh, I cannot do uh, this thing. Uh, 
by myself. I've tried and I fail. Lord God, help me right now. The storm is taking control of me. I'm afraid not only of the wind of my test and trial, but Lord God, I'm afraid that my boat, that my ship is going to take on too much water. In other words, I'm afraid that the adversary is going to destroy me. Lord God, I need your help. I cannot do this thing by myself. Come on, Lord, help me. Help me right now. I need it right now. I need you, Lord God, to walk with me. Lord God, I need you just to talk with me. I got so much going on inside of my head. But Lord God, give me a word of peace. Give me a word of love. Let me reassure me, Lord God, that everything is going to be all right. Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus looked at the disciples and told them, why are ye so fearful? In other words, I was at the bottom of the ship. I was there by the rudders. I had control of this ship the whole time. The reason I was in the hinder part of the ship because I was controlling this ship in your life. You might not have been able to see me, but I was there all the time. Yes, yes, yes. This is what he is telling us. Just because you don't see him, just because you may not feel him, that's no sign he is not watching over you. His eyes might have been closed, but the heart of Jesus was open. His heart is always open to us. I was guiding the ship in the storm, but now that I'm on board, I'm going to bring peace in the midst of your storm. He shouted out and told the wind, peace, told the wind, peace, told the wind, peace, and he told the waves, be still. Stop scaring my sheep. Stop scaring my disciples. When I want you to be quiet, he told the wind, peace to the wind. Told the waves, you stop rocking this ship. Stop rocking the saints. Be still. Told the waves to lie down and be still. Isn't that just like God? Whatever you may be going through this morning, God is telling us that what you are going through, peace, be still. We have no reason to be afraid this morning. The, they looked around and they reasoned uh, among themselves uh, and said, uh, what manner of man uh, is this? Uh, sometimes, saints, uh, we have to wonder ourselves. Uh, when nobody else uh, can do uh, what God has done uh, to us, uh, we can say uh, within ourselves, uh, what manner uh, of man uh, is this? Uh, how was it uh, he straightened uh, out my life uh, when nobody else uh, could fix it? Uh, how was it uh, he fixed my drug addiction when nobody else could do it. What manner of man is this? How could he straighten out my marriage when nobody else could do it? What manner of man is this? How could he fix my finance situation when nobody else could fix it? What manner of man is this? How could he fix my child going and in uh, out of jail. Uh, what manner of man uh, is this? Uh, whatever you need, uh, God can fix it. Uh, whatever we need, uh, God has it. Uh, what manner of man uh, is this? Do you know him this morning? Do you know God by what he has done in your life? Do you really, really know him? God has done something for all of us here this morning. How can we be like the disciples and forget what God has done in our lives? These disciples saw Jesus feed 
the 5,000. He saw miracles and miracles that Jesus performed in their lives. But they cried out, and they reasoned within themselves, what manner of man is this? They forget. They forget that Jesus was the captain of the ship. Not a captain, but the captain. They forget he was the captain of the ship. And they became afraid. Just because they could not see him, just because they could not touch him, and just because they felt that Jesus was not aware of what was going on in their lives, they felt that they were alone. Doesn't that sound like us? Sure it does. It sounds just like Elder Floyd. Sometimes Jesus can seem so, so far from us. And we cry out in agony. Where, where are you? The times I needed you the most, you weren't there. And God said, yes, I was. <laughs> yes, I was. I was at the hinder part. I was at the bottom of your ship. My eyes might have been closed, but my heart was open. I knew what was going on. I knew what was going on. This is our God for us. This is our God for us. I'm going to take my seat after I tell this story. I'm going to take my seat after I tell this story. I'm reminded of a story I once heard. This little boy was on a ship, and the SOS went out, and the alarm began to sound off. And the captain of the ship said, it's time to abandon ship. Everybody get their life preservers. Abandon ship and get into the life raft. This one steward went through, and he saw this little boy sitting on the floor playing with his toys. And he said, son, it's time for us to get off the ship. The ship is sinking. Put on your life preserver, and I will come back after you. He left, came back, and the boy was still on the floor playing with his toys. He said, son, you need to get off the ship. The ship is sinking. And he left again came back a few minutes later, and this young boy was still on the floor playing with his toys. He left again with this, uh, with this young boy playing with his toys, came back again, and he saw the boy on the floor again playing with his toys. He said, son, did you hear what I'm saying? It's an emergency. You need to get on the lifeboats. And the boy looked up at him and said, sir, you, you don't understand. He said, my dad is the captain of this ship. <laughs> Isn't that the way God is? We don't have to worry. We don't have to fret because Jesus is the captain of this ship. He's the captain of this ship. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Let's, let me settle this once and for all. Let me settle this once and for all, for all. When you see on the horizon the dark clouds and the storm is beginning to roll in, you ought to make a decision right then and there to tell the adversary, I'm coming out of this. Whatever storms you may see on the horizon, you can tell the adversary, I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this. Because when I come out, I know that everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. You may not understand how. You may not understand when. You may not understand how he's going to do it. But you can say within your heart, Everything is going to be all right. 
I'm going to declare this to you all also. I make a declaration right now. I make a declaration right now that in the name, in the name of Jesus, if you do like the disciples did here, when you are going through something, when you are afraid, and if you cry out to him, I declare right now that Jesus will answer your prayer. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. How do you know it, Elder Floyd? I've seen it too many times. I've seen it too many times. One writer said, you can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. On the job, someone was trying to tell me that the Holy Ghost is not real. Just because he didn't believe in it, he's trying to tell me that I didn't have the Holy Ghost. Why? Because the Holy Ghost was for them back then. And I said, man, what are you talking about? You don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. I was able to do anything and I wanted to do before I got saved. Now I don't have that desire anymore. I don't want to run around. I don't want to drink. I don't want to do drugs. Why? Because the Holy Ghost has taken my life and turned it around. This is the testimony that the disciples had then. They said, the captain of my ship, I didn't know it at the time, but he was on board all the time. Is there anyone today that has believed this report? Anyone today that has believed this report and that you have a captain on board? Just raise your hand right now if you want to come up. If you want to come up for prayer, believing that God will fix whatever situation that you may be going through. Just asking anyone today. You may be in the church. These were disciples of Jesus. They were in the church. They were Jesus' disciples. And, and, and Jesus had to admonish them. So who can come up to this altar? Whomsoever will. Whosoever will. If you feel that you need help this morning, save or unsaved, you can come up here right now. Anyone that desire prayer, just come on up right now. Just come on up right now. Just come on up right now. Yes, yes. Just come on up right now. The disciples, they walked with Jesus, they talked with him, but still there was doubt in their hearts. And they needed help from Jesus. They needed help from Jesus. They needed help from Jesus. Is there anyone else? Just come, if you will. Just come, if you will. Just come, if you will. Sister Frazier, Sister Flo, would you please come and sing this song for us? <clears throat> Is there anyone else? Just please come. Just come right now. Let the clergy pray for you. Let the clergy pray for you. Just let the clergy pray for you. Just let the clergy pray for you. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? Just come. Just come. Come up here right now. Please come up here right now. And let them pray for you. Let them pray for you. If the truth be known, if the truth be known, everyone inside of this sanctuary need to be up here. If the truth be known, everybody that's in this sanctuary need to be up here at the altar. None of us are there yet. We all have some kind of issues that we need to work on. Just come right now if you will. Just come right now if you will. Just come right now if you will. Just come right now. If you want your baby to say, 
with assurance that everything is going to be all right. You may lift your hands and tell everybody, whatever I'm going through, I'm coming out of this. 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 Whatever you may be going through, you should be able to tell yourself and tell everybody around you, I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this. The storms that have you bound, the storm that you are going through right now, you can tell the devil, I'm coming out of this. You can tell the devil, everything is going to be all right. Let us all stand, if you will. Let us all stand, if you will. And let us all come around the altar. Let us all come around the altar. Asking everyone to come around the altar. Will you please come around the altar? Will you please come around the altar? Worship him. Let's 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 hold our hands up and let's worship him. Let's worship him. Think about what God has done. Think about the breakthroughs that he has given you. Think about when you thought he wasn't there. He was there all the time. Just worship him and tell him I thank you. I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this. Whatever you may be going through, tell your answer, I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this. I know that everything is going to be all right. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. The storm that you're in is not going to last forever. The storm that you are going through now, they are not going to last forever. The tests and trials that you may be experiencing, they are not going to last forever. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this. Everything is going to be all right. Yes, it will. 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 Exalt just lift your hands up right now and just worship. Just worship him. Just worship him. Just worship him. We exalt the Lord. We exalt the Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. We exalt the Lord. We Go and worship him right now. Just go and worship him. Pull your hearts out to him. Just go and worship him right now. Just go and worship him right now. Just go and worship him. This is worship. This is worship. This is worship. Go and worship him right now. In the name of Jesus, we pour our hearts out to you. We exalt you, dear God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We exalt you, dear God. We exalt you, dear God. We worship you. We pour our hearts out to you. We exalt you, Lord God. We exalt you, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord God, for this service. We thank you, Lord God, for those that have come up around the altar. We thank you, Lord God, for this worship service. We exalt thee, O Lord God. We worship thee, O Lord God. Look at our hearts. Even though we may realize or don't realize that you are close to us, 
Continue, Lord God, to stay with us. Just as you were with the disciples, be with us also. Don't leave us, Lord God. Whatever our desires might be, give us, Lord God, the desires of our hearts. As we leave this place, but not all of your presence. Help us, Lord God, not only to exalt you when we leave this place, but let your worship, Lord God, remain in our hearts. We need you, Lord God. We cannot do without you. Bring us back at the appointed time. Give us enough, Lord God, where our cups would be running over. Give us enough where we can bring a portion back to you at the appointed time. And Lord God, we will continue to give you, give you the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. At this time, please follow the direction of Deacon Johnson. <laughs>